Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play Sega Genesis games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So I will mention for this video, you're already going to need to have both dev mode and RetroArch already installed on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. I'm not going to be showing you that in today's video, although I will be leaving a card on screen to my previous video where I show you step by step how to do that. If you have been following along with my previous videos, today's video we're going to be using the latest version of RetroArch, 1.9.4. So it might be slightly different depending on what version you're using. I'll also be leaving a second card on screen to my previous video where I show you how to upgrade your existing version of RetroArch and still keep most of your important files. From this point, we're going to be specifically talking about Sega Genesis and we're going to be needing two things. One is an external drive to read our games from and the second thing we're going to be needing is games. I will be mentioning in today's video, I'm not going to be showing you where to download games. They are really easy to find, a quick Google search will help you out. Or you can feel free to create a dump or backup of any games you already have. For me, I currently have my Sonic game in a .zip file. Now thankfully in RetroArch we can play games directly from a .zip, however I always like to extract my games out first. To extract your game from a zip file is super easy, all we need to do is right click, click extract all, select the location if you would like, click extract, and then our game will be extracted, and it will be extracted here into a .smd file, and that's exactly what we're looking for. So inside RetroArch we can play our games directly from a .zip or from a .smd file, either of these will work just fine. From this point, all we need to do is make sure this file is on our external drive. We're going to be bringing it over to our Xbox and we're going to be continuing from there. So once you're over on your Xbox and you've plugged in your drive, if this is your first time plugging in your drive, you might get this pop-up asking if you'd like to use it for Xbox game storage or media storage. It's really important here that you select media storage so we can add whatever files we want on here. Otherwise, if you select game storage, it will fully wipe your drive and only allow you to install Xbox games on this. So it's important that you make sure this is entered correctly. From this point, we're going to be coming down here and we're going to be launching RetroArch. Once RetroArch opens up, the first thing you're going to be doing is coming to our main menu right here. We're going to be clicking on the load core option. And from here, we're going to be scrolling down until we see Sega. Once we're at Sega, we're going to be looking for Sega-MS-GG-MD-CD or in brackets Genesis plus GX. This is the core we're going to be using in today's video. We simply need to click A to select this. From this point, we're going to be staying here on our main menu. We're going to be coming down one to load content. We're going to be clicking A to open this up. And here we're going to have to locate to where our games are downloaded. So if you're using an external drive like me, they will show up in your E drive. We simply need to locate to that. Click A to open this up. And here we need to locate to our games. So I currently have my Sonic the Hedgehog tree.smd file right here. Or as mentioned, this will also work just fine in a .zip file. We simply need to select this. Again, if you have multiple cores that can read this file type, they will show up here. For at the moment, we're going to be using our currently selected core, which is at the top here. Genesis plus GX. We simply need to click the A button again to select this. Our screen is going to go black for a couple of seconds and then our game is going to start to load up. Now thankfully I didn't have any issues playing these games and most likely you won't either. The couple of games I tested worked really really well and thankfully with our Xbox Series S and X we should have no problem playing this. From this point we can simply open up our menu from the combination that we've entered previously. For me it's down and select. Here we can see all of our basic default RetroArch settings. However, we scroll down here to the options tab, we will get some core specific options for RetroArch. We can click A to open this up. And here I'm going to be taking you through a couple of the most common ones. The first thing we have is system hardware. By default, this is auto. And then for the most part, I'd recommend leaving it as this. However, if you're having any issues loading any of your games, you can come in here and manually select which console you want to use. The next thing we have again is system region, very similar to the one before. It didn't give me any issues. However, it is something I'd recommend. The next thing that also might be interesting is the Genesis FM, which which basically allows you to use the FM synthesizer. By default, it will be set to main, but you can come in here and select any of the other options if you would like. I left it by default personally, but you can feel free to take a look at it. We also have the frame skip options. You can enable this here and you can also set up the threshold. It's not something I'm really a big fan of. However, it is something you can play around with if it's something you're looking for. You can feel free to enable borders here as well if you would like. Again, it's not something I'm gonna be using in today's video, but it is something you can also enable. The last thing I would recommend doing is creating a game playlist. You can see I have one on screen right now for my PlayStation 1. It basically concatenates all of your games into a nice little section right here. You can automatically attach settings and a core to them and it puts them in this nice list with this little icon here on the left of the actual game cartridge or the game CD. I think it's a super nice thing and it's definitely something I'd recommend. It's not something I'm going to be showing you in today's video although I will be leaving a card on screen to my previous video where I show you how to do that. It's definitely something I'd recommend especially if you're using a lot of consoles. It'll make your life a lot easier. Anyway guys it's as easy as that to play Sega Genesis games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial be sure to drop a like subscribe if you're new check out the other videos on the channel i'm going to be leaving a link down below to my paypal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me anyway guys thank you so much for watching until next time as always keep it saucy
Peace.